So we'll now uh, join together in our gathering hymn, which is When Morning Gilds the Skies. It's number 853 in your hymn books, if you want to follow along in the books. As you're able, you may rise for this hymn.
that's why I'm, I'm really thankful I have my robe and my scarf on, because that really helps, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yesterday, my wife Hillary and I, we went to the Getty Villa Museum. Okay? So it's a museum in Pacific Palisades or Malibu. And it's a museum that's full of all kinds of really ancient stuff from the time of the Bible, from the time of Jesus, especially in the New Testament. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because the Apostle Paul, who is someone who proclaims the good news of Jesus, that's what the word apostle means. He went around telling people about Jesus. The Apostle Paul, when he went to the Greek places and the Roman places that we kind of learn about at the Getty Museum, uh, the Greeks and the Romans had a god for everything. Did you know that? They had a god for the sun and a god for the ocean, the sea. They had a god for wine. They had a god pretty much for everything. Okay, so they had one for everything. And the Apostle Paul would tell these Greek and Roman people that there was really just one God of all. One God of everything. But these Greek and Roman people, they, they were like, well, okay, that's good, Paul, but how can we imagine that God? Because they were used to imagining or imaging that, that God, and they're different gods. And so they said to Paul, how can we imagine or image that, that one great God of all that you're talking about? And Paul said, well, just think about Jesus. He said, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. We hear that in our Bible reading from Colossians today. He says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of the one God of all. And if we look to Jesus, then we can image, we can imagine what the heart of God is like, the character of God, what he's about. So whatever Jesus is about is what the one God of all who we can't see is all about. Okay? All right. So put your hands together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that as the Apostle Paul says in our reading today, he is the image of you. He is the image of the invisible God. When we look to Jesus, we see you, God. We see your character. We see your heart. Help us to always know that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can go back. As you are able, you may rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. 
seated for our Bible reading. Shifting 
from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. <coughs> I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Here is the second lesson. Amen. Thank you, God. As you're able, you may rise for our gospel acclamation, thy word, and the reading of the gospel. Jesus enters the town of Bethany and visits Mary and Martha 
in our gospel reading today. And it says that Mary of Bethany took full advantage of this special occasion of Jesus visiting by sitting, focusing, and listening to him. But her sister, Martha of Bethany, prioritized her household work above listening to the words of our Lord Jesus, distracting herself away from what really mattered in that moment. She exhausted herself with what was basically secondary and missed out on what was primary for her soul. And you know, brothers and sisters, we do the same kinds of things today. We can so busy ourselves with the cares, worries, and distractions of this world that we miss out on the better part, as Jesus says. The better part. So a Martha of Bethany-like faith is ultimately an exhausting faith. But a Mary of Bethany-like faith is a rejuvenating, joy-filled, and grateful kind of faith. Because such a faith as this takes the time, takes the time to be still and to focus and receive the word and presence of the Lord. And not only is this true individually for each and every one of us, but it's also true collectively. For a Martha of Bethany-like church is also exhausting. And a church life, that's a lot of service, but only a little bit of Bible study is ultimately draining for all of us. For indeed, the church of Jesus Christ is not some kind of grand charitable club or fellowship organization. Rather, the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be a Mary of Bethany-like church, first and foremost, prioritizing the gospel, the good news and saving word of Christ our Lord. But when we both individually and collectively fall into prioritizing the things of this world, then we start to become so conformed to the cares, worries, and distractions of our world that we begin to miss out on what really matters. That is, an intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior through taking the time daily and weekly, taking the time to sit at His feet, so to speak, and receive His life-changing Word. So, unlike Martha, we can't become so adjusted to our culture of distraction that dominates our day and age, that we start fitting into it like a glove and then miss out on the better things that Jesus has for us all. In fact, brothers and sisters, it's very easy for us Christians to become so well-adjusted to the culture of distraction all around us these days that we do it without even thinking about it. We just slip into it. And then we can slip into thinking and acting the way the world thinks and acts and saying the things that the world says and judging and discerning the way the world does. And we then become more and more conformed to the ways of the world and conformed to the culture of distraction that we live in. And, tragically, brothers and sisters, sometimes we can become so comfortable with the ways of the world that we start to become uncomfortable with the Word of God. But this is why we must fix our attention, like Mary of Bethany, back onto the Word of the Lord, first and foremost. We must fix our attention squarely on Jesus. And we have to prayerfully search the Holy Scriptures in Bible study 
both individually and together in Bible study groups, to learn what God is calling us toward. So we can't, we can't let the culture of distraction drag us down to its level where we're okay with thinking, acting, saying, judging and discerning the way the world does these things. For a world that's dominated by the modern culture of distraction is ultimately an empty and exhausting kind of world. It's a graceless world. A faithless, loveless, and hopeless world. But the living word of our Lord Jesus Christ lifts us up to his level where new life and renewal are found. And thereby, with the word of God filling our minds and our hearts, and with a true inner happiness of spirit as a result, we can joyfully be countercultural. Countercultural to the culture of distraction. And we can stand for the grace and truth and righteousness of the Word of God. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we have to leave the culture of distraction behind us and move forward with the light, life, and love that God has for us that we can only access through Christ's Word and sacrament. It's not easy to leave behind the culture of distraction. It's not easy to move beyond it with the power of the Holy Spirit. It really isn't. It's a spiritual warfare, as the Bible says. It's not easy, but it's choosing the better part, as Jesus says in our Gospel reading today. And we can take heart with the Word of God in our minds and in our hearts. We can take heart from the Word of God in the Confirmation Bible verse we gave to Nate Ross a month ago. It's the word of the Lord in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 which says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you are able, you may rise for a creed of faith. In response to the good news of Jesus Christ we've heard this day, we'll confess our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed as it's printed in your bulletin. Brothers and sisters, what do we believe? I believe in God. United in Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Ever present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word and share your meal, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God praise. Hear our prayer. Through Christ, you created all things, seen and unseen. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate those in power to end human trafficking.
trafficking, enslavement, dehumanization, brutality of any kind, and to protect the lives and livelihood, livelihood rather, of indigenous people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Through Christ you bring hope. We pray for all our partners and missions. Bailey Human Care Center Food and Clothing Ministry. Door of Hope Ministry for Homeless Families. Fred Jordan Mission for the Homeless. Walter Hoping Home Women's Shelter Ministry. Fair Trade LA Congregational Coffee Campaign. Lindley Gothorn of Wycliffe Bible Translators and the Kogi people. The Hunger Camp of the Gideons. The Recycle for Sight Program for the Lions Club. The LA County Beekeepers. Pastor Jack and the BRIM Korean Presbyterian Church, our Woolly Preschool, our Scout Pack number 307, Bishop Brenda and the Southwest California Synod, and presiding judge Bishop Elizabeth and our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and who serve as caregivers, especially Brandon, Shannon, Taylor, Chris, Janine, Elsie, the family and friends of Gary Innocente, the family and friends of Emily Osset Walker. Ruth, the family and friends of Robert Johnson, Chad, Christine, Kenny, Carl, Carrie, Ruth Lund, Lori, Chuck, Nanette, Sam, Jane, Dwayne, Phil, Ellen, Ruth Thresher, Margaret and Larry, Margaret, Larry, and all of men and women in the military service and law enforcement, uh, firefighters, and paramedics, our government authorities, and all our fellow congregation members who are not able to join with us in worship, and all who are, the, all our family members and friends who are our, who are on our hearts. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In Christ, you make your your world fully home. Inspire the worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of our Lord Jesus. Bless the ministry of Sunday school teachers, Bible study leaders, God of grace. Hear our prayer. In Christ you brought forth firstborn from the dead. We give thanks to the saints of your gathered, who have gathered at your heavenly table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory, God of grace. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those of our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. As you're able, you may rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread of life and drink this cup of salvation, we proclaim the Lord's sacrificial death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We'll now pray together our offertory prayer. God of abundance, you have shed for us a wonderful harvest, and as we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray daily the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace forever and ever. Amen.